Hello, hi everybody, and welcome to part 7 of Banjo-Kazooie. So as soon as you enter Mumbo's hut in Bubble Gloop Swamp, you want to get all the way to the top because the second honeycomb piece is there, and I really like that, you know? Uh, some people would assume that Mumbo's hut, because it appears in many different worlds, and you go to it over and over again, that, no, they wouldn't put any hidden collectibles in there, they wouldn't put any super secret items in there. Oh no, bullshit. There's a honeycomb, and there's a mumbo token behind his chair, in fact. That's right, you just you just ripped him off. <laughs> but, uh, anywho, by visiting Mumbo in Bubble Gloop Swamp, having ten tokens on hand, he will transform you into a crocodile. A crocodile who can fit into very small spaces, so if you ever need to go back to Mumbo's hut, uh, you know, that's a quick shortcut. You don't have to go through the maze and whatnot. And as you can see, the piranhas will not mess with me. They will not attack me at all when I'm in the swamp water. So while being the crocodile, we are going to use this opportunity to get these five musical notes over here. I probably could have got the waiting boots for those, but whatever. Uh, and I'm going to go to where the treetops were with the huts, because underneath those treetops are musical notes and a Jinjo for a jiggy piece and stuff that I couldn't normally get with Banjo-Kazooie, because even if I took the wading boots, I can't really crawl underneath. You have to be a crocodile so that you're small enough to make it, in, to make it under there, you know. And as a crocodile, you can enter this crocodile structure to get another jiggy piece and a mumble token and musical notes and blah 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 blah. But, uh, I'll come back to this. I want to save it for last because I wasn't sure if you fail the minigame and then it counts you as dying and then I have to collect all the musical notes again. So I was just sort of being careful about it. But, uh, again, you have to go to the treetops over here to get stuff that you couldn't get normally. As for the crocodile, he does actually have an attack. If you push the B button, he will chomp for three chomps, I believe. Arp, arp, arp. And uh, you can actually destroy enemies who are flying towards you, because you can jump and chomp at the same time. And, uh, you yeah. know. I mean, it's not an ideal gameplay style. I would not want to be a crocodile forever. I want to have my super jumps and my, my flapping wings and my beak attacks and my ground pounds and everything, but, you know. For this particular situation, oh, it's totally fine to have the crocodile form. But yeah, the treetop area gave me two mumbo tokens, a Jinjo, which gave me a Jiggy, a whole bunch of musical notes, which I maxed out, got a hundred with, so I'm only missing one Jiggy piece, and that Jiggy piece is inside the crocodile structure. And some players might go to a future world and then come back to this one later, because what they're asking you to do in this particular situation is a contest. So let's go meet up with this guy. Her, 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 I'm Mr. Vile. Not a charge shot! <laughs> Anywho, Mr. Vile wants us to play a game. The game? Well, we have to eat more creatures than he does. And Mr. Vile is faster than us. He is bigger than us. And he can be kind of a pain in the ass. Now, at the top right there, you actually can see some transparent white sneakers. And that's a move you're going to get later in Gobi's Valley, a future world that uh, I haven't even unlocked yet. And I could come back to this world and use those sneakers to be faster than I am now, because they are speed-up shoes, essentially. They make your crocodile run so much faster, and that way you can get more creatures to eat, and Mr. Vile will be that much outclassed. But you don't need them. It's definitely going to be harder, but you don't need it. I remember vividly playing this game back in 1998, uh, trying it out for the first time, and I was always having more creatures than he was, and I was like, eh, is that so hard? I mean, when, if you have the sneakers, oh, it's even easier. But, oh, you can do it without the sneakers, and so I'm going to do so, because I am a badass. I don't need no stinking sneakers. Huzzah! But that's not it. See, Mr. Vile is kind of a, a sore loser, kind of a petty douchebag. Uh, <laughs> he now has a new stipulation. There are now going to be red jumblies as well as white jumblies. And you cannot eat the white ones. I believe your character gets stunned for a short period of time. If he does, he like starts coughing them up, going like, <laughs> So uh, don't eat them. But uh, you're still racing for the red ones, still racing him. Gotta eat more than he does. 
And again, all you're really doing is moving the control stick and mashing the B button to chop. Uh, you can't actually let him push you. If he's heading towards a jump lead and you get in front of him, you'll actually get pushed along the way and be faster that way. So it's one trick if you're not using the white sneakers. Um, but for the most part, you can't really knock him out of the way. He is faster than you, and if he's a barreling freight train, the only thing you can really do is be fast, be ahead of him so he can push you along the way. Or, you know, sometimes I feel like your chomp does have a lot more reach than it looks, and you can actually bite things that you aren't really that close to, but because you chomped, it sort of got sucked into your mouth like a vacuum. I know that sounds silly, but I swear that is how it feels to me. Um... And again, being an even more sore loser, an even more petty douchebag, he's like, Okay, we're gonna do a third and final game! Now you gotta eat what's at the top of the screen! So if you look at the top, it's red jumblies. And oh, now it's white! Now you gotta eat the white snake things. So if it says white and you eat red, your guy will start coughing and being like, oh, oh, oh god! And if it's red, and you start eating white, vice versa. I need a drink of water, my throat's going sore. <laughs> but, uh, you know, basically, it can be a little bit tricky, and the white sneakers make you so much faster, and being faster makes the game easier, and everything's all hunky-dory, so you can always come back to this world uh, later if it's giving you trouble, you know. As long as you collect a uh, hundred musical notes, uh, you won't have a big problem coming back to this level too much, I don't think. I mean, you'll have to go to Mumbo's Hut and everything, and that's a chore. But, uh... If you're a pro player like I am, everything's fine. You can beat him in all three races without those sneakers. And teach that bastard what it's like to be a loser. And then he challenges me again, but he has the gall to go, Oh, but if you win this time, I'll give you three extra lives. Bitch, I just beat your ass three times in a row. You're beneath me, you chicken feed. I don't need this. I don't need this at all. You can stay in your little crappy crocodile hut. I'm going to the big top. I'm going to the big leagues. But anywho, that was Bubble Gloop Swamp. I got 100 notes. I got all the jiggies. I got blah, 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 everything. Um, yeah. <laughs> So I wanted to stay as the crocodile, I don't want to go back to Mumbo's Mountain, because again, if you run too far away in Gruntilda's lair, the magic wears off and you'll just transform back to normal anyway. So you don't really need to go back to Mumbo if you save him for last. But also, as we remember earlier, I broke this ice chunk in front of this tunnel, and now I'm going to go through it with my crocodile body, since I can now fit. And what am I going to find in here? What am I going to find in here? A book? Oh, God. Cheeto the Spellbook you have found. Magic cheats I have for you. Hey, Buckbrain, what did you say? You better not give my spells away! So, yeah, you get cheats. This cheat uh, allows you to have unlimited blue eggs so that you can just constantly shoot them out of Kazooie's mouth over and over and over again, and that means you don't have to collect any. And it doesn't really get in the way of actual progress. You'll still collect jiggies and notes, no problem. Uh, I don't know if the Xbox Live version disables achievements. I sort of doubt it. I mean, it's not really getting in the way of anything. If you use cheats, who cares? But you do have to go into the, the Treasure Trove Cove Sandcastle area. You have to type in blue eggs there, and then you'll get your cheat. If you never ran into Cheeto, and you tried putting in blue eggs before you actually knew about it, like, let's say... You do a second playthrough and you're like, oh, well, I know the cheat is blue eggs. I'm just going to type out blue eggs because it, it should work, right? No, you do have to run into Cheeto first. That is a prerequisite. It's one of those, you know, things where, like, I, I forget which game it was. I think it was Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door where you knew the name of the guy you had to say the name of, but they, 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 they screwed up the, the character's... Uh, typing things so they would be like one less word than what it actually is because even if you knew what the answer was You're not allowed to put it unless your character has seen it, you know It's just you know if Banjo and Kazooie have not met Mr. Cheeto Then you the player cannot have met Mr. Cheeto and therefore you should not know blue eggs and blue eggs will not work for you 
Stuff like that. Video game logic, you know. I'm not gonna question it. It works. It is what it is. But anywho, if you've been a good player up to this point, you should have 400 musical notes. And if not, well, you're gonna need 260 in order to progress further through the castle as we speak. Also, this is the point where I remembered that uh, after leaving Clanker's Cavern, I did not get uh, the Jiggy piece I unlocked from hitting the Gruntilda switch inside of Clanker. But that's all fine and dandy because it gives me an opportunity to show off uh, a particular feature that I mentioned earlier. So, you know, it's all good. Inside this room, you'll hit a switch. The switch will make a rotating jump pad. Jump the, into the vase in the middle of the room, and you can go to Bubble Gloop Swamp's Jiggy Piece, which I unlocked from ground pounding the Gruntilda switch in Bubble Gloop Swamp. Blah, blah, blah. Hells yeah. But as I said, I missed the one in Clanker's Cavern, the, the Gruntilda Jiggy piece that I got from Clanker's Cavern. So, go back to the Egyptian room. There's a whole bunch of areas you can't really go to. Uh, the Egyptian room is where we can go to Gobi's Valley, but I have not unlocked Gobi's Valley yet, so it's just a placeholder world. It's just a closed off world that I can't really visit. So, yeah. And I need the waiting boots in order to get to it. Uh, I'm just showing you where it is. This is Gobi's Valley, but I didn't unlock it, so I can't really go in there. I love the Egyptian rendition of Gruntilda's Lair. <laughs> I just love that musical sound, the musical sounds used in that part. Oh, it's, it's so great. I don't believe you can open that, at least not yet. And I think that's the Gobi's Valley jiggy piece now that I think about it. But anywho, go up the stairs higher into the castle. We'll find this creepy looking Gruntilda doorway with 350 musical notes so I could technically go in there if I wanted to. And there's lots of webbing all over the place and your eggs can destroy the webbing no problem. So if we look left of the Gruntilda head, we will see a magical cauldron that is also protected by a webbing. And this cauldron is your first shortcut activated because this one leads to the one room where you unlock the treasure trove world. And so now you have a shortcut. If you restart the game, you go into the first room, go in the cauldron there, he'll take you all the way to the giant witch door area. And it allows me to get the Clanker's Cavern Jiggy that I missed, so yeah. When I opened the Clanker's Cavern Jiggy, these eyes popped out, you just ground pound them. Booyah! There's your fourth, or third, Jiggy. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter. My throat is dying. I am seriously struggling here. <laughs> I, I, did, I did part six before I did part seven, and my throat's just sort of going on you, so uh, I'm not gonna lie, I need a drink. Thankfully, this video is almost over. Oh my god. I usually have a drink on hand. I don't know what I'm doing. But, uh, anywho, in this room, in this little icy cavern, this icy pathway, we will find Freeze Easy Peak. We unlocked this world when we went into the little area behind Bubble Gloop Swamp, so it's open to us. And, uh... How do you have a picture of Banjo and Kazooie in your lair if they were never your mortal enemies before, Grunty? How does that work? Did your did your henchmen just paint that, like, right away? Like, as soon as you stole Tootie and you noticed that Banjo and Kazooie were busting in and going through Mumbo's Mountain to stop you, she's like, Eh, paint a mural of Banjo and Kazooie in Freeze Easy Peak. Yeah, I'm looking for video game logic. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking for logic in video games. I don't know. My throat is dead. <laughs> See you at part eight.